Hello, everyone. My name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is the ventilator. Welcome to Only What You Take With You. Presented by Page Turners, they were not. My Star Wars podcast. So over this past weekend is... was D23. And I talked a little bit about the um, announcements that came out of of that. But there is one thing I I did not get to talk about. We certainly talked at length about Skeleton Crew. But um, one of the other big announcements from John Favreau is that they have already started filming the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, which will be titled The Mandalorian and which will be titled The Mandalorian and Grogu. Uh, some people wonder about that title, but I think that um, it pretty much gives us exactly what it is. Now, what's the story of this movie? Well, that has not yet been revealed. They are not said. So I'd like to take a moment to maybe responsibly speculate. Um... The only thing that was shown at D23 was just some images um, Grogu hanging out with the Anzellans, which are those little tiny construction aliens, and many other things besides. Um, now, I was just talking a few minutes ago to a friend of mine about the fact that Pedro Pascal is a very busy man these days. Um, He's working on The Last of Us Season 2, which I'm very excited about. Marvel's The Fantastic Four and The Mandalorian. Um, Now, in regards to the Fantastic Four, there has yet to be a good Fantastic Four film. It has not happened yet. Hopefully, Marvel Studios is able to fix that with the one that they're working on right now. But regardless, Pedro is a very busy guy. Now, there's been some debate, particularly because of season three. In season three of The Mandalorian, uh, as far as I am aware, Pedro Pascal was almost never in the suit. Because he was off working on The Last of Us season one. Now, I imagine, this is just a theory, that in the movie, because it's a movie, he will be in the suit. In fact, I would probably be willing to bet a lot of money that we will see his face at least once. Uh, my reasoning being, because it's a movie, because it's a big deal for Lucasfilm. Now, I don't really know the origins of the movie, meaning that I don't really know whether this was always something they had thought about or whether it was an idea that came along later and John Favreau and Dave Filoni just said, 
Oh, by the way, we got an idea for a movie. Let's go do it. You know, I, I don't really know how long this idea had been germinating. But regardless, I am excited. And I think that the the opportunity here is to take what really works really well on the small screen and to blow it up to larger um lar larger proportions. To blow it up to a larger scale. Now, I don't know exactly if the budget of this movie will, will be higher than the budget of the show. I imagine it will be. Uh, what that means for what they're going to be able to do with the show. I wonder at that. Now, it is entirely possible that the budget isn't that much bigger, and it looks very much like the show. Which, I mean, the show already looks great. But to take it up to another level would be interesting. And maybe expand the scope of it because you're not limited to a very specific per, per episode budget. Now, the Mandalverse, as they call it, includes the Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew. It's called the Mandalverse because they all take place at the same time. There was a big event that happened at the end of Ahsoka. A certain Grand Admiral has returned to reunite the Empire. Is this movie going to have anything to do with that? Well, that's kind of what the story has been building toward in all these shows. I don't know exactly how they're going to tackle that story. The, the story of Thrawn's war against the New Republic. I don't know if that's going to be books, comics, games, series. Movies. There's one movie we assume. So I don't know exactly whether that's going to have anything to do with this movie. If I had to go with my, my gut and my intuition, I would think that this movie will not really have to do with that story. But will tell its own specific story that maybe hints at some of the events going on as far as the galaxy's big picture is concerned. Um... So, as for that, I don't know. Now, what might be interesting here is to have them go on a particular MacGuffin quest. Now, what is a MacGuffin? A MacGuffin is when our heroes are trying to get something that the audience doesn't really care that much about. It matters to our characters. This is usually an object. 
whether it be the Holy Grail in Indiana Jones, whether it be the Death Star plans in the original Star Wars film, whether it be the ring in Lord of the Rings, it, it's the item that our heroes want. And it doesn't always have to be an item. It could be a place like the Great Valley in the Land of Fortune. Or it can be an idea or something like that. My feeling is that Grogu, it's going to be Grogu's story, I think. Now that Nando has kind of redeemed himself in the eyes of his people, I have the feeling that it might be more of Grogu's story than his story. But what is Grogu searching for? Well, Grogu is now kind of the apprentice of Din Djarin. And it's Din Djarin's job, according to the armorer, to take Grogu within his adventures so that Grogu will one day be able to take the creed of the Mandalorians. That's the idea. Basically, he's not just a tag-along. Now Grogu is, is basically Din Djarin's son. Adopted son, Din Grogu. And Din Djarin's job is to basically take Grogu as its apprentice and raise him as a Mandalorian. At least that's the that's the general idea. Whether or not Grogu or Din choose this is another story. So I imagine that there may be some evolution of Grogu as far as learning the ways of Mandalorians. If that is indeed what Grogu wants to do. Because I think it's all going to come down to that. But we know that Carson Teva, favorite New Republic X-Wing pilot, at the end of Mandalorian Season 3, he says to Mando that they will, or Mando basically volunteers to go on missions for, for the New Republic on a case-by-case basis. Could this be one of those missions that he is sent on? Maybe Carson says, well, hey, Mando, this is a problem. We need you to go fix it. Or we need you to go get this for us. Or go and solve that problem. Or go go and see what's going on. So I imagine that this episode might be like an episode. Sorry, this movie might be like an episode of the show. In terms of, we need you to go do this for us. Uh, It would make sense, I think. Or, it would really make sense that the mission has something to do with the return of Thrawn and the Imperial Remnants. But I'm not sure if the movie would tackle the big picture, but keep it rather on a micro level. A micro level rather than a macro level. Um, So there's so much we don't know. I do think it makes sense 
But we're probably going to see Carson. Uh, Carson Teva, because he's a tiered. And all the other things in the Mandelverse. And I imagine that this movie might be a mission that Mando is sent on by the New Republic. It's possible. Now, Mandalore itself has been reunified for the most part. So I don't think that's going to really play a part in it. Now, this gives us another this brings up another point. We may not be dealing with the Mandalorian society, but will bo make an appearance here? Uh, I do not know. I, I, I follow Katie Sackoff, and she has not said anything. But I imagine she would not be allowed to say anything until Lucasfilm were to make the big announcement. It's possible that she may not be in the movie because her character is off rebuilding Mandalore. Until they really reveal more information, like all bets are off as far as what the story is. How big is the story going to be? If it were me. From a business standpoint, it would make the most sense. If the movie were kind of a standalone adventure, that is very accessible to those who are not in the know as much as I am. Because in order to be successful, this has to appeal to a large audience. (laughs) And the people who know all the ins and outs and ups and downs of Star Wars, few and far between. So I think that it would make sense if the story is somewhat of a standalone um, adventure that anyone could get into at any point. So tying it in with the return of Thrawn, with the big events going on in the galaxy, in a way, I don't think it would make sense because it would almost be too inside baseball, as they call it. Too much of a, yeah, you know. Too much of a, you got to be in the know to understand this. Considering that this will be Lucasfilm's return to Star Wars movies, it would make sense to make it as accessible as possible. And until we get more information, I have nothing to base any theories off of. So, it might sound like a whole lot of nothing that I'm saying and you would be absolutely right to say so because we don't really know anything. Now this this should be interesting. Now Moth Gideon I think has been it is dead as far as we know and that's probably the end of his story which is interesting because he was kind of a thread 
that tied it all together in the first three seasons. So with him out of the way, you're either dealing with pirates or other such groups or you're dealing with Imperial Remnants as was hinted at at the end of Season 3. But many of these things are just speculations because there is no evidence to base anything on this. However, the big reason I wanted to talk about this is because John Favreau announced they have started filming. Someone once coined or invented the word tangibilization, which means that something is becoming real. There has been some criticism in recent years about Lucasfilm announcing movies will make to have those movies not happen. The announcement that this film is filming, this is an example of, okay, it is no longer a theory that they're going to make a movie. Sorry, and that's on the next second, dude. That's strange. So, thank you. That's how I get my phone not to talk. I say thank you to it. Otherwise, it thinks talking to it all the time. But what I meant to say, what is it is only a theory that there will be a movie. Now it is more than just an idea. Or more than just a maybe we'll get a movie. This is the tangibilization that it is physically happening. And it is going to happen. And it's no longer just an idea. And so people can actually start getting excited. There's really going to be some interesting things that they can do with this movie. And they're excited to see where they go. And to me, I'm open to any because I have faith that they're going to do what makes the most sense given what's going on at the time of this story. And as I said, as this is the first movie, returning us to the big, to the big screen, it would make the most sense to have it be the most accessible movie that they could make. I don't know anything about release dates. Word is that it will come out in May of 2026. There are some other big movies opening around that time. At least as it currently stands. So we'll need to see at what the future brings. But nonetheless, I'm excited, particularly because now it's happening. Now they are really doing it. And that makes me very excited to return to the movie theaters to see a Star Wars movie. So those are my thoughts. My name is Brennan Miller. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. Thank you for tuning in. It's only what you take with you.
presented by Dave Stringer's They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.